Cricket and Arp, written by Moshe, illustrated by Tina Sloan. Dedicated to Sprintzer Meinbubby and Victor Critelli, my best buddy that taught me the open shortest path first. All profits are donated to children's education. The purpose of this book series is to teach children realistic and rich technical computing and ethical topics on a fundamental level. By bringing life to the different parts of the computing and networking mechanisms, it allows children to visualize and think about things in a different way, to perhaps spark interest in the topic, and allow something to connect to once that spark is ignited. The intention is to help our children develop to their full potential while taking profits from these books to help children that cannot help themselves. It's the desire of the author for anyone that receives benefit from these books to use it and give it. We can all heal this world if we receive to give. L'Chaim I'm here to tell you a story about a boy named Packet. Hi, I'm Packet. And his dog, Arp. Oh, Packet is no ordinary boy, and Arp is no ordinary dog. I'm a Packet and I'm a boy. After all, not every boy has a header, a payload, and a trailer. I have all three and I'm awesome. And not every dog has a bark that can echo over a network. Oh! Packet and Arp live in the network that lets computers talk to each other. Packet keeps track of the address in his header, can carry a message in his payload, which is like a backpack. I got a payload in my backpack and make sure that message doesn't get lost with a check in his footer. Arp is his trusty friend, and there's no dog in the world that is a better guide for Packet across the Ethernet terrain. Arp, you're my best friend. Arp! About 4,000 milliseconds ago, about eight in human years, his mother, Mrs. Stack, gave birth to Packet. Then she gave him a datagram, which is what network dwellers call a message, to deliver to her favourite host named Rose. Pack it! Take this datagram in your payload backpack and deliver it to Rose. I'll put Rose's address in your header so you know where to go. And I'll put our address in your header as well so you can come back. And I'll add up all the parts of the message and write that number in your checksum which goes in your footer, and Rose can use that to make sure you didn't lose any of the messages along the way. Thanks, Mom. Sometimes Packet's backpack gets holes during his journeys, and parts of the datagram fall out of his payload. The checksum helps his destination host be sure that the message is all there. It is very important that you deliver this message to Rose but we can't guarantee that it will get there. You will just have to do your best. There is a long road ahead of you. Each stretch of the road is a segment to traverse, and each time you finish traveling a segment, it is called a hop. Don't worry, I can do it. Many of these segments are Ethernet segments, and you will not be able to find your way alone. You need ARP to help you. Arp? Just tell him the address, where you want to go, and he'll bark out to the world. Arp? He will hear an echo that indicates where you want to go, and then he can lead the way. Okay, Mom, I'm ready to go. And the journey began. Packet looked to ARP. So where do we go first? And then Arp let out a mighty bark. Oh! And then his neighbor Roger replied back. <laughs> Looking for Rose, huh? I'm not sure exactly where she is, but I can point you in the right direction. Come to my interface. Which is what network people call their front door. And I'll check my routing table. Which is what network people call a map. Come on, Arp, that sounds like so much fun. Packet and Arp entered the interface and were in awe. Wow, you have such an awesome place here, Roger. What sort of router are you? I'm a mid-sized modular router. I have onboard encryption, and I can make phone calls, too. It looks like your friend Rose is not one of my neighbors, but I know someone who can help you find her. I'll show you the open, shortest path first route to Rose's interface. 
And so Packet and Arp zoomed across the link that connected Roger to his neighbour, William, who has a huge home with many interfaces. Oh, hello there, Packet. I'm William, and my home is a lot bigger than Roger's, as you may have noticed. Just look at all my interfaces. There are packets like you coming and going through these interfaces every millisecond. The reason my home is so big is because I am a core router. My neighbors will direct packets to me, and I can help guide them to where they need to go. Hmm, I see in your header that you want to visit Rose. She is an old friend of mine across this frame relay link. However, Ethernet packets can't travel through frame relay interfaces, so we'll need you to put on a different header. Here you go. Here's a new header. Thank you, William. This'll get you over to Jacob. He's neighbors with Rose. Better hurry. Mrs. Stack will need to retransmit you if she doesn't hear back soon, and you'll have to start your journey all over from the beginning. Oh, no. And then I'm just going to be another dropped packet. And with that, Packet put on his new header and went zooming across the frame relay link with his dog, Arp. Arp. On the other side, he met Jacob. Hello, Packet. I'm Jacob. I'm a border router, and any packets that want to enter or leave my neighborhood come through me. You can't take that frame relay header off because our neighborhood is Ethernet, just like the one you came from. Packet puts his Ethernet header back on. I see from your header that you want to visit Rose. She's on my local Ethernet network. Or, so I think, her interface is flapping, which means it's going up and down. That'll make it hard to get there, but ARP can find the way. I'm so excited. We're almost there. I just know it. ARP took a deep breath. Arp! But there was no answer. Try again. Arp! And now Packet and ARP wait. One millisecond, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. This is taking forever. But suddenly, Arp's ears perked up. She responded! And he happily wagged his tail. Let's take this Ethernet frame and get to Rose. I know exactly where she is. There is a lot of contention on this network, so be careful not to bump into other packets on our way. And finally, at Rose's interface, Packet announced himself. Hello, Rose. I have a datagram for you in my payload. How wonderful! Let me read it! At first, Rose is unable to read the data because it is encrypted. But luckily, she has the key, so she can decrypt it. That's weird! This message was unsigned! But the checksum in your footer looks alright, so I knew you gave me the whole message! Inside the message was an old, misplaced device driver. Wow! I had given up on looking for this. Thank you so much. I will put it in my storage so I don't lose it again. Unfortunately, Rose didn't realise that her old, misplaced device driver was infected with a Trojan. Packet and Arp were already on their way back home to acknowledge the receipt of the message. But as they left, Rose's storage was becoming corrupt. Oh no! The Trojan virus is attacking my boot sector and my kernel is panicking! Ah! Kernel panic! Ah! Rose's interface shut down as the Trojan took over. Arp looked up at Packet. Never opened an unsigned encrypted attachment, especially an old device driver. Anyone could have encrypted a message with Rose's public key and given it to her, because her public key is public. Why would Mrs. Stock do anything to hurt Rose? 
Mrs. Stack did not know. It isn't her job to know the contents of the datagram. It's just her job to make sure the packets get where they are supposed to go. Packet nodded. Rooms got owned. Big time. Arp agreed. Indeed, little buddy. You did a great job. But I'm sorry Rose died in the worst way. Who could have imagined there could be so much power in my payload? Now it's time for you to return to your own broadcast domain. This time, I'm going to disable the VLAN just for you. Yay! Then I can ARP in the entire subnet without anything restricting how far I can ARP! Whee! ARP! 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 The End Thank you for joining us on our adventure with Packet and ARP. What have you learned? You didn't think there would be a test? Let's see what you have learned. Who changes Packet's header? Mrs. Stack or William? Why? William changes Packet's header, but Jacob can too, because they are routers, and that's what routers do. Correct. Who gave birth to Packet? Mrs. Stack gave birth to Packet, because the IP stack in an operating system are how packets are born. Correct again. If Packet has an Ethernet header, can he travel on a frame relay link? No way. William or Roger need to give him a... new header. Only packets with frame relay headers can travel on frame relay networks, and only packets with Ethernet headers can travel on Ethernet networks. Bravo! What did Rose use to make sure Packet had the entire datagram? Rose used a checksum, which she calculated and compared to the checksum in Packet's footer to ensure everything was correct. Correct again. How does Mrs. Stack guarantee the packet got to Rose? That's a trick question, Mr. Narrator. Mrs. Stack can't guarantee that Packet got to Rose. She has to wait for Packet to return to let her know. Correct. What happens if Mrs. Stack never hears back from Packet? Well, if she never hears back from Packet, she'll give birth to a new Packet and try again. Then the first Packet will be a drop Packet, which is how most people die in video games. <laughs> We'd love to hear what was good, what was bad, and how we can make it different. Send your questions to questions at packetandarp.com to learn how you can be a super engineer. Visit our website at www.packetandarp.com to purchase the book to read to your children so that eventually they start reading to you and check out our Packet and ARP t-shirts. Remember, all profits go to children's education. We can only heal this world together. We love you. Good night.